what does this and this item regularly found in residential houses have to do with turbocharged rally cars? Stick around and I'll tell you. So yes, what the hell is an intercooler water sprayer? Well, let's start at the beginning with this story and then we'll progress from there. Okay, let's talk turbochargers on a bit of 101. So this is a turbocharger that we pulled out of a Subaru. Uh, we took it out because, don't know whether that uh, would be picked up on the camera mic. However, uh, this turbo is pretty much shot. The bearings have, have gone in it. However, it'll work perfectly for this demonstration. So there's two sides to a turbocharger. You've got the exhaust side. Some people call it the hot side of the uh, turbocharger. And effectively what happens is the exhaust gas comes out of the engine and enters through this port uh, at the bottom here. It then runs through this tiny little fan here, which is called a turbine wheel. And as it comes through that turbine wheel, it then exits and the actual exhaust itself for the car will be bolted on here and, and then it runs on its way towards the back of the car. Now, on the other side of the turbocharger, there is a shaft that runs right through the middle here. And then this side of the turbocharger here is called the compressor side of the turbocharger because the little fan that's connected to that same shaft in there is called the compressor wheel. And what happens is as the other side of the turbo is uh, spinning, it spins this fan, this side sucks air in through this opening here. We've talked about turbo restrictors before. This is a turbo restrictor. Sucks the air in through here, compresses the air inside this area here, and then forces it through this end of the nozzle here. And then it uh, then exits into the engine. And the compressed air in here is known as boost. Now, turbochargers are quite often are commonly referred to a hot side, so the exhaust side or the turbine side, and then the cold side, uh, because that comes from the inlet air coming through. However, turbochargers by an inherent nature create heat. So basically, because you've got hot exhaust gas going into there, that creates heat in the turbine and the turbo system, obviously, and that heat even uh, that transfers through the metal. And also, when you compress air and you squeeze it up, it actually uh, also can, uh, creates heat and so compressed air is very hot. Now you may be thinking, why is that a drama? Well, what happens is that air needs to be as cool as possible. The cooler air is, the denser air is, uh, the more oxygen it holds. And the more oxygen the air holds, the better it burns with the fuel that you put into the engine. And so therefore, the more efficiently it burns, the more power you get. So therefore, what we really need is we need to have cold air or cold as possible air going into the engine because the air is denser. Uh, and so having boiling hot air coming out of a turbocharger is not ideal. So what we need is cold compressed air. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where this gadget comes in. This is called an intercooler. This one is uh, off a Subaru. There's a few sort of different types out there. This is what they call a top mount intercooler. I'll talk about why that's important in a minute. So basically, what you may be thinking is this kind of looks like a radiator, and you'd be correct. It is. It is a radiator that cools down air. So what happens is, with this particular type of intercooler, the hot air out of the turbocharger comes in on this side here, enters into the intercooler, and it exits here into the engine. And in the meantime, what happens is that cool air rushes over the bonnet of the Subaru through the iconic bonnet vent, and then it goes through these fins here, and on the way through here, takes the heat out of the compressed air, or the boost inside, before that boost, that compressed air, goes into the engine. With me so far? Clear as mud? Okay. Right. Well, there's a few different ways of mounting intercoolers. Subaru have opted to mount the intercooler on top or behind the engine and then use a bonnet vent to force feed air through that to help cool it down. Cars like, say, the Evo, the VR4, um, Escort Cosworth, and, and a whole bunch of other turbocharged cars, they have what's called a front-mounted intercooler. So the 
Intercooler is sitting in front of, right at the front of the car somewhere, uh, generally in front of the radiator. So as the car is moving along, the air rushes through the uh, intercooler to help cool it down. And both of those methods work relatively effectively for what they are. We are interested in the intercooler because all the time the car is moving, say particularly we'll talk colder cooler wet rallies where water uh, moisture in the air is is rushing through the uh, intercooler as the car is moving that air is passing over and down through the fins and that is helping to cool this air down and the and the intercooler this shape and size of intercooler works relatively efficiently for what it is however as soon as you stop, so uh, at the end of a stage, so you've been roaring along through a, a rally stage and then you stop at the end of the stage and the car is idling, well air is no longer rushing over this intercooler to help cool it down. However, the hot exhaust gas is still heating up the turbocharger and air, whilst it's not under, under high boost pressure, is still hot air being forced into this intercooler which is causing this to heat up. And so what that means is that uh, when you say start the next stage in particular, if you've been idling for a few minutes or, or a bit of time, uh, or you, you have a, a series of slow or tight twisty corners where there's not uh, much airflow, the air temperature starts to rise in the intercooler, uh, which means it's then uh, warmer going into the engine and the engine's developing less power. Now, on a cold uh, rainy day where plenty of water is uh, and um, cool air is getting into the intercooler, it'll cool down quite quickly. However, uh, warmer events, uh, it's not so uh, easy for that to happen. And particularly idling, this uh, whole structure is made of metal and it can get what's called heat soak, where the heat actually, uh, the hot air inside it gets so warm that all the metal then becomes hot and then that metal then gives off the heat back to the air in the intercooler again so that starts losing efficiency and that is where the intercooler water sprayer comes in now Mitsubishi have a similar sort of setup however I'm going to talk Subaru here and it works like uh, uses two of our commonly found household items so one is uh, in Western Australia at least evaporative air conditioners because it uses the principles of evaporation and the other is uh, micro jets or reticulation uh, sprayer jets that you're likely to find in your uh, garden and what happens is that a very fine mist of water is sprayed onto the surface of the intercooler and as that fine mist of water is sprayed on the intercooler the air rushing in through the bonnet vent and down through these fins grabs that water and through the process of evaporation which is a very effective at cooling it rapidly cools the intercooler down and helps to draw the temperature out of the inlet or charge air going into the engine now the real trick is to spray a very fine mist and to do it in short bursts if you pour a deluge of water and keep on flooding the intercooler, it actually loses efficiency. It also won't take long before you run out of water. In the earlier Subarus, there was a button mounted on the dash connected to a timer. Three to five seconds of misting and the driver made the decision when. These days, when we build the intercooler water sprayers, we set them up automatically controlled by the ECU. Depending on engine RPM, boost pressure and air temperature, the intercooler water sprayers will be triggered if and when needed. Which means one less thing for the driver to worry about. It also means the water can be used more efficiently and the results can be more consistent. So hopefully that's cleared up what an intercooler water sprayer does. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, it's important for the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe. And we'll catch you again soon. Cheers.